problem 8.27. In this problem, we analyze a pharmaceutical as it is sterilized by heating it from 25 to 75 Celsius as it moves through a straight thin wall stainless steel tube at a rate of 0.2 meters per second. The diameter and the length of the tube are given, as well as the properties of the pharmaceutical. Please note that there is a linoleum foam resistance heater wrapped around the tube, which provides a uniform heat flux. One of the goals of the problem is to calculate the value of that required heat flux in order to reach the temperatures are there given. It is known that the velocity is fully developed as it comes into the tube and the temperature is uniform as it comes into the tube. The second goal is to determine the surface temperature at the exit of the tube as well as a distance of 0.5 meters from the entrance. We consider this problem to be steady, one-dimensional, we neglect the conduction taking place on the wall of the tube and we also neglect viscous dissipation. The first part in the analysis is to calculate the mass flow rate in the system. We know that the mass flow rate is equal to density, which is the density of the pharmaceutical, the velocity at which it's moving, and the cross-sectional area. Using the information given, we could find that, that the mass flow rate is equal to 0 0.0253 kilograms per second. We know that the amount of flux that enters into the system has to be equal to the amount of the convection taking place divided by the surface area that we have in contact with the fluid. So let's calculate the amount of convection taking place. That is going to be equal to m dot cp. The difference between the mean temperature of the exit and the mean temperature in the entrance, and that is going to be equal to 50, 60 watts. The surface area for this particular problem is going to be equal to pi d L. So if we take the amount of the convection divided by the cross-sectional area, we could find out that the amount of flux for this problem is going to be equal to 12 682 watts per meter square. The next step in the calculation is to determine the temperature of the surface um, at the outlet and at, at the value of x equal to 0.5 meters. In order to do that, we need to further determine what kind of flow are we going to have, whether it's going to be laminar or turbulent, and what type of uh, region are we dealing with thermally, whether it's an entrance region or a fully developed region. To do so first, we calculate the value of the Reynolds number. Therefore, the Reynolds number in this case is going to be density, velocity, diameter, divided by viscosity, and for the values given, we find it to be 1270, which is less than the critical value, which means that it's going to be Now we need to determine whether or not we're going to be in the fully developed region or the entrance region. For the laminar flow, we find that the value for the fully developed region thermally is going to be equal to 0.5, the Reynolds number, the product number, and the value of D. Using the values in this problem, we find it to be 8.5. 0, 0.6 meters. Notice that in this case the outlet is provided at 10 meters. So for this calculations we are going to determine to be fully developed in the thermal region. Therefore the nozzle number value that we are going to use is going to be equal to 4.36. And we also know that the nozzle number is defined as H D divided by K. Therefore, the value of H at that particular location is equal to 2.74.6 watts meter square K. 
by knowing the value of the flux and knowing the value of the convection coefficient, we could find that, that the temperature of the surface at that point, the outlet, is going to be the minimum value at the outlet plus the flux that we're going to have divided by the value of the convection coefficient. Therefore, the temperature at this particular location, at this surface, is going to be 1.1 Celsius. Now we need to do the same process for x is equal to 0.5. To calculate the temperature at x is equal to 0.5, we first need to notice that this position is in the entrance region. So the process to get the nozzle number is a bit different. What we're going to use is figure 8.10. Notice that in figure 8.10, there are two nozzle numbers, one that is average and one that is local. In this case, we're going to use the local since we know the exact position at which we will like to calculate the nozzle number. In order to use this figure, we need to calculate this ratio first. So we have x divided by d divided by the Reynolds number times the product number. For the values given in this problem, this ratio is equal to 0.0031. We use this value, we go to the table, we approximate it somewhere over here, and notice that we have constant surface flux, and we have the thermal entry length, so we're going to go to the second uh, dashed line that we have over here, and we approximate the nozzle number to be around 8. Therefore, we say simply that the nozzle number is equal to 8, therefore the value of the convection coefficient is around 5.03.9 watts per meter square. Okay, so we need to find out now the temperature of the surface at that position x, and we need to find out what is the mean temperature at that position plus the flux divided by the convection coefficient. Notice that we could find that the mean value at the position x to be equal to the, be the TMI at the entrance plus the differences between the outlet and the inlet times the position divided by L, which is going to give us 27.5 Celsius. Now that we know the mean temperature at the position X, we could find out the value of the surface by simply plugging in the, all the values into this equation. Therefore, we find that the surface at that position is going to be equal to 52.7 Celsius. Please go back and double check your calculations, be able to understand how to use this graph, and be able to get the same results.